Okay. We have returned now. Back to Star Wars. Knights of the Old Republic. And now one of my favorite parts of this game, which is probably going to be pretty boring to you guys, so I apologize, yes, is talking to the crew. I thought I said I don't want to talk about it. Not particularly. I, I guess it wouldn't hurt exactly either, though I, I, I don't know why you're so interested. When I, think I can't even remember what we were talking about. That stands out above all of them is the one that I respect the most, Saul. You don't. I thought everyone did. But Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier, and I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was so trying he turned to Sith. the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. I, I argued with him, and he got angry, and he left. I never saw him again. Saul was my mentor. He led us to so many victories against the Mandalorians. Even when things looked to be at their worst, I just, I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to buy Oh, man. Bombers. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what had happened. I'm not going to stop him. I, I could have stopped it all. I blame Saul, not myself. I was I was stupid and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. No, I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> You're gonna get upset, Kath. Um No no, it's not. But I don't wanna talk about it right now. Let's go. Okay, diving deeper into the story of Carthonasi. Bastila. Yes, I did. I wanted to speak to you about our mission and what lies ahead for us. It seems fate or the Force is driving us into a confrontation with the Dark Lord. You the Dark Lord. Yes, Malak. The confrontation Malak. will be difficult for you. I remember how hard it was when I first faced Revan. It's true that due to my battle meditation, I was with the Jedi Strike team that boarded Revan's ship. We did not kill Revan, however. Our mission was to capture Revan if possible. It was Malak who turned on his own master, firing upon Revan's ship while we were still on board it. It was his desire to kill us and his master both. Thankfully, we narrowly escaped the vessel as it exploded. As I said, we were there to capture Revan alive. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. Remember, and the fault of the Jedi's. Great Jedi. Heroes in every sense of the word. They demonstrate the danger of the dark side to us all. I'm sorry, we really shouldn't speak of this anymore. The memory of my confrontation with Revan is painful. Let's return to the mission, please. Return to the mission. Um, that was actually... Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity, given the bond that connects us. Very well. I'll tell you a bit about my... I was just saying the first thing that we had talked about, um... That had actually happened in the recording session that I lost, so I, found to be I had heard that. At a young age, as most Padawans are, as a girl, I was given to the order to be trained. When I joined the order, I left my family on Tal Ravan, as all Padawans do. Give me Shepard. Still there. Give me the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. Discouraged? Why? Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst. But even love can lead to folly. Emotional entanglements can be dangerous. They can impair rational thought. They can lead to outbursts of uncontrolled emotion. A Jedi must be above such things. Yeah, Anakin, you dumb. Like all who join the Order, I have learned to embrace the life I've chosen. I had to let go of my attachments to my family. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all of my family. But I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. I was not on good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was <laughs> to resent her and the way she treated my father. She pushed my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune, and I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to the Jedi, but my father was heartbroken. 
A child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed, personal desires notwithstanding. Love can only obscure and confuse the matter. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. But some sacrifices are harder than others. I, I do not wish to discuss this anymore. I would rather return to our mission. Okay, another layer of the onion. I'm confident that you can deal. Oh, okay. I can't remember exactly what you do for this. So back through the Ebon Hawk. I can't remember. I want to see who all is on here and talk to everyone. Like the stupid droid. Beep 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 beep. beep. Oh yeah, you can make him get programming spikes. Beep boop. Beep 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 bloop. Zalbar! I bet you have a lot to say. Okay, not really a bunch. We just did a mission with him, so I supposed. Okay. Okay. Dalbar. Dalbar. Zalbar. Zalbar. Please. Zalbar, let me free. There we go. <laughs> what in the world? That would have been bad. Johnny. I feel I must apologize for the way I acted towards you before in the grove. It was wrong of me. I am sorry <laughs> for attacking you. I am sorry for thinking you would only try to kill me. I hope that by helping you in your task, I may redeem myself in your eyes and in my own. Thank you. It is most reassuring to know that you can forgive me, even though I try to take your life. Oh, it's nothing. People try and take my life all the time. Together, I will succeed. Okay, well, you have to have more than that. What is it you would like to speak to me about? How I came to be a Jedi? I am sure you would not find it very interesting. Are you sure you would like to hear? Well, it goes back a number of years. Back on my home world, we did not see Jedi very often, especially where I lived. The hind end of space, a pit of a world, to be sure, where Jedi rarely tread. But we had heard of them. Well, everyone had, so that is not to be unexpected. Champions of truth. Defenders, Defenders of justice, heroes of the Republic. It was very easy for a child to be enthralled by their image, their mystique. Maybe I was one of those children. Yes, yes I did. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. I was old, and maybe a little enamored. They were quite striking, especially the tales of their leader. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi. To lift myself out of the rut I had been living in for years, and to make a real difference as the Jedi were. <laughs> the foolish delusions of a child, but this child made it happen. As soon as I was able, I left my world and went in search of them. I found them and was accepted. I had been living my dream on Dantooine for several years. Then what happened? Came, although, perhaps I was not entirely ready for it. Or not completely suited to the task. Otherwise, I would not have fallen. But thanks to you, I have been redeemed. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. 
action does what is needed. Okay. How may I be of I do not know how to help you with that. I am sorry. Man, they're all big jer jerks about it. I was trying to figure out how to get rid of this dumb stowaway jerk. Oh yeah, mission. Forgot about you. Oh, sorry. I was thinking about Terrace. I still can't believe it's gone. I mean, I grew up there and now it's 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 just gone. Yeah, I know. The Jedi got rid of Revan, so I figure Malik's days are number two. But that doesn't make the pain go away, you know? Look, I'm not saying I can't go on or anything like that. It's just, it's a shock, you know? I mean, I knew the Sith were evil and all, but the reality of it kind of slaps you in the face. But I suppose that's why we need to stop Malik, right? The more time I spend dwelling on Terrace, the more chance some other planet will get wiped out. I guess... That's what it comes down to. So don't worry about me. I'll be okay. And if you need my help against Malik or the Sith, I'll be there for you. The Sith. Hey there. What can I... I... I was a little snappish when we last talked. I'm sorry about that. I get a little touchy when it comes to Griff. It's kind of embarrassing telling people about him. It's complicated. Griff wasn't the most popular guy. He had his faults. But I still loved him, you know? Sometimes people don't understand. I never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me here to Taurus. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in a Starfighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? You're stowaways! I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves out. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Without my brother, I don't know where I'd be. He gambled and drank, and he was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive, he showed me how to slice into a computer security system, how to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes, and how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Yeah, Griff did right by me. I really miss him since he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. <laughs> he promised he would come back, eh? He fell in with a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him and off he went. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. Subjects closed as far as I'm concerned. Okay. If I can't be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? Okay. Okay, well, there's mission. <laughs> Snappy as always. Candorous! Yeah, what do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Basilisk Except war droids. Himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the outer rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. I remember it well. Or I remember it well. Acid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me. My heart racing with fear of the coming battle. Every new warrior has to fear to understand how to beat it. You must know that. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. The exhilaration. Man, that's like ODST stuff. 
as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. <laughs> that was some fight. I want a basilisk. I'll never forget this. <laughs> but things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I satisfied your curiosity for now. Yes, Is quite. There something else you want to know? <laughs> Stimulants make a warrior. Here's a speed boosting stimulant. There anything else? Your choice. I can go to the workbench here really quick and craft something. Lightsaber. I can make a yellow crystal. What is it? Oh, it's just an attack bonus. Assemble. Cats, assemble. I'm gonna do a yellow, double yellow lightsaber. Assemble. Look at those. Look at those. <laughs> Actually, can I? One second. Let me. Can I adjust people's inventories? They already use Albar. I want to give you Baka's ceremonial blade. Thing's pretty good. Um, let's see here. Okay, there we go. What in the world? Oh, cats, what are you doing out there? Um, no, I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, sweet. Now I can go check and see who else is in here. Is it just that stowaway still? Oh, it's the engine room. The engine room. The engine room. Sasha. Hello, Sasha. Mucha shaka paka. Mucha shaka paka. Mucha shaka paka. Okay, so who is in here? No one in here. I think that's everyone actually, right? Oh wait, no, where's Joe Lee? Where's that old where's that old kook? Joe Lee Bindo! Ah! I knew you'd be in here for some reason. Stop bothering me with Man, they're all so mean when it comes to that stinking girl! What in the world? Okay, well, I guess it's to the next place. By the way, I don't think I know how to, well, sadly. Yavin. Dantuin. Koraban. Manan. Tatooine. Should I go to Tatooine? Yavin. Um. What in the world is that? 
small space station. I can't remember exactly what that is. Okay, so we've been to Dantooine. Um, now we have Manon, Korriban, and Tatooine to go to. I should probably just go to Tatooine. Yeah, I'm going to go to Tatooine. Here we go. So I should probably get ready to stop recording here. One second. Okay, so it just showed us... Um, oh, no, it's going to do this again. So more cutscenes that I can't have you see. No, I'll just describe them to you.